John, happy birthday, guys. Awesome, yeah. And uh, thanks for putting up with me as I, as I mourn a little bit this morning. And so I don't have a proper message per se. And um, I, think I, uh, I think it was Patrick I met out there and, uh, and said that he'd been, you know, just starting to come to church. And in my head, I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> He's got to put up with this this morning. Patrick, I promise I'll do better next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, just just a little update for, with our with our family and ma'am Andy, haven't we had just a, a wild 2024 when it comes to our our moms? And really, I just want to honor Andy this morning. She is the caretaker of the home, uh, and, and and I don't mean she cleans the kitchen. Come on, somebody! I mean she takes care of people and. Um, and has done just a fantastic job of just holding on in hard times this year. Listen, we were out in uh, and just just a, a hello from Discovery Church in Edmonton, Alberta. Had the absolute honor of being with Discovery Church last Sunday, and uh, it was a year ago actually that I uh, I preached a message called "Choose Your Hard." I don't know if you were here for that or you remember that. Everyone remembers every single sermon I preach. I, I know, I know. They're just so good. Um, and so I, I was able to share that word. And, and really in that moment, I, I was choosing a hard um, task that Jesus had called me to and brought me to in that moment. Because it was just the day before um, where me and Pastor Lauren of, uh, of Discovery um, we do what good pastors do on a Saturday, and we went golfing. And um, and I called my dad as as we were kind of warming up on the green, and I said, "Dad, you got to see this place. It's so cool. It's like it was an old like coal mine that they filled in, and so the undulation where my golfer's at was just like perfect, and the, they had black sand, and it was just like really really cool. One of the coolest courses I've ever seen." And I, I called him. I said, Dad, you got to see, like, you got to see this place. And he's like, oh, he said, oh, that's great, is what he said. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, he said, have fun. And I play, was playing so good. Gosh darn it. I was playing really good. And I got a call when I was on the tee the block of the seventh hole. And, and it was my dad and... He said, Drew, you got to come home. I think mom is, I think mom is dead. And I'm just letting you in on just being vulnerable. My mom had had so many ups and downs and medical moments and, and question marks. And so in that moment, I'm not fully engaged with, is this a reality or has this happened? And. I'm wrapped in the fact that I'm across the country and I'm about to speak and then we're about to take in conference and and uh, as as conversations went, really started to figure out the severity of of the conversation. I love this though. This is just something Holy Spirit dropped in me as I was quickly preparing. Sometimes God will actually take you out of something that you think is what you need so you can minister to a situation that you didn't even think was going to happen. Something, sometimes you think you need to be in a specific place, but if you're obedient to the ministry that is on your life, you're obedient to the ministry to the people that are around you and to those who are relying on you. Listen, 95% of me last weekend wanted to be in Alberta. I wanted to be with my boys. I wanted to be at conference. I wanted to be <laughs> dancing to like some killer worship music and having a time. But my ministry was to my dad here in Windsor. And so never, ever fly Flair Airlines. <laughs> just don't do it. If there's any, any word of advice this morning, just, just do that. Just never, ever fly Flair Airlines. And we got home. And uh, 
let me just kind of stay in my notes. Uh, last time I spoke, and hopefully you guys had a blast with Josh Bowers last week. Love that guy. But last time we talked, we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit weeks ago, knowing that Jesus demonstrated and he taught principles. uh, Well, he demonstrated and taught principles, but he also demonstrated the power that comes in relationship with Holy Spirit. And I know for a fact that the power in my life fed by the Spirit was able to love and support and walk with my family as we faced something that wasn't supposed to happen until far down the road. These kinds of things usually just happen at the worst time. And, and so, like, even in these moments, I'm not perfect, and, and I'm mad at the airlines, and I'm mad that we're on the phone for th- over three hours with uh, people trying to make this happen. I'm mad at a 3.45 a.m. call time to wake up. But again, our ministry was needed in Windsor. And so it was a reality, and we, we went up to the ICU, and, and my mom had been on life support for a few days, and... And um, no, no brain activity. And so really the, the question is, well, what's next? And I love my dad and I want to honor my dad. I wish he was in the room this morning. I think it would have been a bit too hard for him to be here this morning. But um, he really wanted to honor her wishes to donate um, some, some organs. And uh, again, because of her medical past, we weren't really sure if that was an, uh, an option. But I, I love that even on Friday night as we watched her pass which was just, it was a blessing and it was wild and it was sad. And um, they had to wait five minutes until it had happened. And then they rushed my mom out of the room and they rushed her into surgery because there was actually someone waiting downstairs in surgery to get her lungs. And so now my mom's gift of life is a part of somebody else's gift of life. And, and it's a beautiful, weird thing that I don't want to picture. Uh, but but it's, it's beautiful. And so even in tragedy, my mom saving a life. One thing that um, caught my heart in all of this was the idea. And again, coming back to the understanding of, of family and rallying together. Again, my, my mind has kept coming back to, to the idea of family. And, and in this moment, we were able to go to my, uh, my aunt and uncle's house, the place where I grew up. And I saw uh, some cousins that I haven't seen in a while. And we went out to lunch and, and we sat in my mom and dad's backyard and we were telling stories and, and we're laughing. And, and it was great. We know for a fact, and I know this, and it's not, not just my family, that family can be both a blessing and at moments it can be a curse. Amen. And, and I'm sure we've been there, the ups and downs, the highs and the lows, and, and the moments where you wouldn't change it for the world, and the moments you were like, man, I wish I could, I could go back and do things different. Family isn't perfect, but family is the very thing that God is reminding us this morning that is important, that when we look around this room and we think about the people who belong to Exchange Church, belong to the family of God that might not even be in this place this morning, it, it, it's important to remember that when we look around and we realize that we're not called to do this life by ourselves, that what we believe and, and who we belong to, God the Father, who we belong to, it matters. And so there's something as family members that we're called to do in spaces, in places like this. This morning, it's not about Drew and it's not about Drew's mom. And, and I'm just in a funky place and uh, again, navigating some new territory. I'll be honest with you, it. I'm hurting more as the days have progressed. And so we're navigating this, but we're called to do this in community or family where, again, the common goal first and foremost, obviously, is to lift up and glorify and magnify our God. Amen? Come on, somebody. Amen? That's what we're called to do as a church family. That's why we gather to to exalt him and to glorify him. But secondly is to lift one another up in moments where we can't stand by ourselves. I want to let you know that, again, because God has saved you and redeemed you and called you a son and called you a, a, a daughter... You actually now have a responsibility to um, share in the characteristics of Christ. You have a responsibility to lift up your brothers and sisters, your mom and dad, your family, friends, when they are going through hard times. I had no idea what I was going to say. And I woke up 
the, today and I woke up at 6.30 and, and God put this story on my heart. It's from Exodus 17, 8 to 13. The Amalekites came and fought against the Israelites. And so Moses said to Joshua, choose some men and go fight the Amalekites tomorrow. And I will go stand on the top of the hill and watch you. Come on, Moses. Dang. But I'll be holding a walking stick that God gave me. Joshua obeyed Moses and went to fight the Amalekites the next day. At the same time, Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. Anytime Moses held his hands in the air, the men of Israel would uh, start winning the fight. But when Moses would put down his hands, the men of Israel began to lose the fight. After some time, Moses' arms, they became tired and so they put a large rock under Moses for him to sit and then Aaron and her held Moses' hands in the air. Do you see it? Do you see it this morning? Aaron was on one side of Moses and her was on the other side and they held up uh, held his hands up like this until the sun went down. Joshua and his men defeated the Amalekites in battle. I think one of the greatest gifts that I have ever been able to receive and partake in in ministry and as as a pastor is is moments when my friends and my families, my brothers and sisters in the Lord have have given me the gift of of their vulnerability where they've said, Drew, I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. I need someone to hold my hands up. I'm in a battle. I'm in a situation. I've done something stupid. Something terrible has just happened. I need you to hold me up. And we all know this, that, that battles and trials come when we least expect it. I mean, just a few verses earlier, you're reading how the Israelites are, are living and Moses is getting manna every day and he's striking rocks with his staff and, and uh, Dasani water, or no, Dasani's kind of gross. That's my bad. Voss water. I like Voss water. Voss, like purified water is, is coming out of the rocks and they're just living in peace and they're living in harmony and, and just like that, the battle happens. It's tough because I actually thought the battle in my mom's life was actually starting to dissipate because she had been in the hospital for so long because she was getting her, her knees fixed and it was like one out of a thousand chance that something like a specific thing could go wrong and it did. And so she had been in the hospital and rehab for so long and my mom had, uh, she does she doesn't like hospitals or doctors, I don't think too much. And so she's like, I'm out of here and she should have stayed and all that stuff. But I love the fact that she was getting stronger. She's walking around the house, and my dad was really pumped. And, oh, she's getting better. It's great. It's getting good. I thought she was getting stronger. And then, boom, unexpectedly, a battle shows up in our lives. But again, I love that we aren't called to do life alone. I love that we're called, even as a son to a father, even as friends who have blown up my phone and my Facebook and my Instagram and my email and, and gifts at the door and, and what can I do? And this is what we do as a family of God. Amen. Again, I, I'm just trying to relay my situation to you that there's going to be a battle that shows up maybe in your life or the life of someone that's close to you. And I think this is just a nice reminder. And my mom is giving us a nice reminder this morning that we are called to hold each other's hands high in moments of the battle. Because we can't do it on our own and we get weak and it's hard and we get tired. But that's what God has done for us. He's held us up and he's, he's redeemed us. And so in such a way, we come around each other and we, we make sure that we show up to the battles in, in people's lives to ensure a victory for them. Amen? Exodus 17 is a beautiful picture of Moses doing his best under the direction and the leading of God as to how to win a specific battle, this specific battle in, in, in this moment. But there's moments of fatigue and weakness and Joshua steps in. And I'm thankful this morning. I want to say thank you to my church family. I'm thankful for the Joshuas in this place. I'm thankful for the hers 
H-U-R-H-E-R. Thanks for everyone who's reached out and, and have held up my, my family's hands. People who have rallied around us, people who've loved us and, and really just said some, some incredible things to encourage us. And simply enough this morning, and I'll just end with this, but um, I want to encourage you that if you're in a battle and you're going through something where you know you're not going to be able to see the, the victory that's intended for you without the help of others, I want to suggest that you're in the right place this morning. Because it's not just a tagline that we say we're trading religion for relationship. But we're actually calling you. I believe that God is reminding us this morning that he's calling us closer to him and closer to one another in moments like this. To encourage each other and to strengthen one another. And even when you get those phone calls of, hey, I I did something stupid. We correct and we love. And and just like in in season, out of season, we patiently correct and rebuke and encourage each other with good teaching, with love. So God so loved me that I would would spread that to to somebody else around me. I just got a a picture this morning, and, and we can end with this. Can I just get these lights turned down just the tiniest bit, just so I can see the crowd a little better? And this is just, just a question, and, and I, I, I just want to be obedient to what I thought Holy Spirit was calling me to do this morning. But is there, is there anyone who's, um, who really just feels like they're going through it, that they're in a battle, and maybe you haven't shared it with somebody? Maybe it's, it's something that you've been hiding on the inside. And again, like, Whatever it is, you're just, you just feel like I, I'm in a battle and I need someone to raise my hands. I need someone to hold my hands up. Do we, do we have anyone in the, in the house like that? Kaylee, would you come down just for a second? We love Kaylee. Kaylee is an uh, OG exchanger, beautiful family, beautiful kids. Was serving in, in junior high, serves in the kids ministry. A good friend of mine. Andy, would you con- come up here as well? This is just, um, I really believe um, you can't take the, yeah, just move over just a tiny bit. Don't mind me. I'm always roaming. Um, I just got a prophetic picture this morning as I was praying and I was leaning into to this moment. Uh, we're just going to use Kaylee and, and we're not going to ask you to say anything in your situation, but we're just going to believe with you. Just as a prophetic act, Kaylee, would you just raise both hands? And just as a prophetic act, I want you to receive from God this morning that as Kaylee is raising her hands and me and Andy are holding up her hands, this is just a prophetic picture this morning of what God is doing in your life, even right now, even if you don't see it, even if you don't trust it, even if you don't know when the battle is going to end. Maybe some of you are tired. Maybe some of you are like, I don't even think I'm ever going to see a victory. Right now, as friends and as pastors, we hold your hands up while at the same time understanding that God is ensuring a victory, Kaylee, in your life for whatever you're facing, for whatever struggles, whatever challenges, whatever questions, whatever doubts, whatever fears, whatever is going on right now, it's a prophetic picture that you are going to see the victory in Jesus' name. And that's for you in this place too this morning. Whatever you're going through, I want to let you know that as your pastor's as your friends, as your pastors, as the leadership in this house, we hold your hands up with you this morning. We fight with you. And we're praying for you, alongside you. And so listen, you don't have to do life alone. You don't have to fight your battles alone. Find that friend. Get that small group. Talk to your pastor. Whatever you need to do, again, to, to see that victory come to fruition. I'm going to pray, and I think we got time for maybe a couple more songs. We might end early this morning. Is that okay that I shared this morning?